Behind the Drapes podcast. I'm your host, Expo Rich, and we are live at the IAE Expo Expo show floor here in Dallas, Texas. And with me, I have a very special guest, the founder of Expo Convention Contractors and my father, Richard Curran. And uh, I'm excited to uh, talk about his journey through the trade show industry. So thank you for being here. Absolutely. Thanks for inviting me out. This is fun. So the format of the show is typically like I like to dive in and find out what got people started in the industry and who were some of like the people that influenced you getting into it. So, so let's go back to the very beginning. What was it? What was your first, your first steps into the trade show industry and how did you get hooked in? Oh, actually in high school, it, uh, there was a company called Mancraft out of Kansas city, Missouri that opened in Miami beach. And one of the guys in the neighborhood was a supervisor. Saw a bunch of us kids running around and says, hey, you guys want to work the weekend? And we were all 17 years old, 16 years old. First day was stringing pipe and drape in the warehouse. Next day was hanging it on in Fanta Blue. Oh, wow. And uh, after, next day after that, laying carpet. Then I had to go back to school. Show came out, took the drape down, rolled the carpet up. And that was, that was it. That was the beginning. Yeah. That was the beginning. And uh, so that was, you first worked um, as a line worker and then... Yeah, that was 1967 and then 1970, they offered me a full-time position. Oh, wow. Yeah. So that's when, that's when you started doing um, more supervisory duties yes. and whatnot. Exactly. So I was, I was going to junior college and working there pretty much 20, 30 hours a week. And then the next year went there full-time. Oh, cool. So, so then... That was Mancraft. So from there, you went on to work at other companies, or how did that go? Like, how did you transition? Because I know you'd worked for multiple companies throughout the years. Yes, stayed with Mancraft until they sold to GES. Okay. And so five years of Mancraft, five years of GES. Freeman bought it from there. Five years with Freeman. They pulled out, went to Orlando. I don't want to make the move. I already had a family. And uh, went to work for an, actually an IND company. Oh, okay. And uh, the IND company said, you know, how can we expand? And let's, let's get into the pipe and drape, the trade show business. And that's how it started. A couple of years after that, the owner wanted to retire and sold me the company. And that's where, in 1995, uh, they started Expo. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So in that early part of the journey, um, when you were young up and commerce supervisor, learning different parts of the business, who was one of your original mentors that you that that really guided you and, and, and drove you to be better at what you do? Yeah, actually, the owner of Mancraft, Leon Manny, was a good mentor. Introduced me to everybody in town. He was actually um, convention bureaus, board of directors, uh, hotel managers, sales managers association. So I went to every single meeting. And uh, I was in my 20s. Oh, wow. And he introduced me to everybody in town. And I uh, was able to take it from there. So so he would guide you along and say, hey, you need to be here, you need to be there, and this is what you should be. Absolutely. <laughs> and then uh, some of his employees that he brought in from Kansas City, Missouri, were actually very instrumental in my yeah. career. After it sold the GES, um, were there... Did you continue to find mentorship from anybody through that through that company? Was there anybody there, that, or Freeman, or whichever? Were there anybody in those companies that stood out as a, as a mentor? Yeah, there was. Uh, when GES came in, they brought in some people from United Expo, from New Jersey, from Philadelphia, and uh, so Bob Spiegelman came in from Philadelphia, became our GM, okay. and then he was able to. Help me uh, polish my my career. Okay. So is he one of the ones that drove you to step up and be more absolutely more of a leader? Yeah. yeah. So I went from show supervisor to sales manager to director of sales. And, yeah. And, uh, and that was fun because then I could get out. It was just you know one job at a time. Yeah. It was, it was planning for the future and so. uh, and working with the customers. And were, were you more um, just customer facing back then, or were you, were you um, strategic with the company at the time, like at a higher level of management yet? 
not at that time. Okay. And, uh, uh, but then started going to industry meetings. And uh, the good thing was going to all the convention bureau meetings and things like that. Yeah. Meeting everybody in the hospitality business, all the hoteliers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I know that, that helped a lot. That's definitely something that you you taught me early on. The same thing was you know, get out there, get involved with associations Absolutely. and organizations, and and um, you know definitely something that I took from from working with you for all the years. With sure. Uh, you know the importance of those relationships, the importance of being involved, and um, you know not only. Are you involved in helping shape and drive the industry when you're when you belong to these these groups, these organizations? But you're also, uh, for one, it's good marketing for you as a company because now Absolutely. you're 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 top of mind. You're because you're yeah. involved, you know. And then when you're involved in these things, you become a subject matter expert. You know, people want to come to you for advice and let them know. So, sure. and like we always say, you know, it's better to, for them to ask you and you be able to guide them than ask somebody else. Absolutely. So yeah. yeah, and it was simple things like. You know, somebody asked for a floor plan, instead of emailing it, I would hand deliver it to the contour or to their office. And so it was face to face interaction. That now that brought up questions. Oh, what do I do now? Yeah. I was able to Exactly. Yeah. You gotta be in the position to be the one that they need, that, yeah. that they ask for help. Oh yeah. So. Oh, you know, Rich is here. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we just had this client that had this question. Yes. Yes, yeah, definitely. So and um so from there, so in '95, Expo starts. Um, did you did you always plan to focus on South Florida as a market, or did you plan on, on expanding further? Um, I know there was some time that there was uh, some some people in Orlando for a bit, but then what were, what were your expansion plans you know, early on? Well, in the beginning, it was just trying to focus on Miami and you know, the tri tri county area. Yeah. And uh, so as the companies, our customers came through, they used us in Miami. Then we would follow them to Orlando or Texas or anywhere else. But they had to go through Miami first. Right. And once they got that experience, we didn't solicit out of our tri county area. Okay. But that's how we developed the business because once they learned what we did for them right. in the first show. Right. Yeah, having working with us and you know, getting a, a, the expo way and the treatment that we, the way we treat our customers, you know, it's it's definitely something that they would like to replicate in other cities that they know they had to over time. So yeah, and then so, once we started that, then we understood that most of the associations were in Washington D.C., Alexandria, Virginia. So once we had two or three or four customers there, then we could go out and solicit new yeah. because we had references. Right. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, you got to do it once in order to say you can do it, right? So, so these days, uh, taking a less active role, we'll call it. Absolutely. And, yeah. And um, because of you, you're able to. <laughs> and I'm very proud of that. That I, you know, the legacy is going to continue, and, yeah. and you're doing a fantastic job. Well, thank you. I feel I, very comfortable turning the reins over to you. Well, I appreciate that because it's uh, you know the, to know that. Over the years, the, the, the less and less that you had taken on and the, the more that you stepped away that gave me confidence in what I was doing and growing the company and whatnot. So I, and, and I've been excited about our, our growth and, and scaling as well. So, sure. Uh, you know, as we, I'm excited just watching it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what's next? What's, uh, what's next for you as far as like something you're excited, uh, looking forward to doing the next year or so? Yeah, finishing my house after the hurricane damage is totally. top priority at the moment. And uh, as soon as I get that back up and running, which is going to be another year, then I can back to travel, back to you know, do a few shows with you. And, uh, and uh, yeah, pick it out and do some adventures. Yeah, awesome. Three, four adventures a year. Nice. Well, Dad, thank you for being on the show with me. This was a blast. And, uh, and you know, I often share a little bit about your story as part of my story. So it was an honor to actually have you on here. And that way people can hear it firsthand. Um, the things that, you know, where, how you started you know, from the, the small, small company that you originally were to, the, to what we are today. Wow, absolutely. Thanks for all you do.